This interview is part of our Road to EF series. You can find the rest by clicking here. Do not feed the monkeys as players in charge of multiple camera feeds, looking in on the private lives of various people, but ask them not to mess with their lives. With all of this information being unveiled to them, and the mysteries of this lives laid bare, can players resist the urge to interact with them in some way? Theory and Brothers developers behind the Sumus McNally Grand Prize, Excellence in Design, and NUOVRAWARD nominated Dame Sport with Gamma Suit about the thoughts that went into creating a game about watching people, the mysteries that can be found in ordinary links, and how taking a light-hearted look at some unsettling subject matter made it more approachable to players. We are Mario, Alberto, and Louis Sullivan, programmer, narrative and game designer, and producer of Do Not Feed the Monkeys. We started making games, let's say professionally, in late 2013. Before that, Mario had done some small games in his free time, but none of us had been in touch with the video games industry. Other than as players, we, the founders of Fikti Oma, are three brothers that have been playing video games since video games entered homes. In fact, our first computer was the X Spectrum 48K. We played together for ages, mostly narrative driven games, which we love. In fact, the idea of making our own video games as a team started back then. When we were kids and teenagers, back in 2013, we decided that we wanted to create together the games we do love to play, and that's how Fakti Aramu was born. Since then, we have developed two commercial games, Dead Synchronicity, Tomorrow Comes Today, 2015, an old school point and click adventure game released on PC, iOS, Android. PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch, and, well, do not feed the monkeys, 2018, which is our most ambitious game so far. In the beginning, do not feed the monkeys was inspired by the main character of a novel we read a few years ago, W.H.O. Now and then, stares at his neighbor, who lives in front of him, and watches him dancing, all alone. This guy, the Watcher, cannot stop wondering about the reasons for that, is his neighbor, taking classes and he likes to practice, but he does not have a couple, does he try to recall happier times, when he used to go dancing with the person he loved, we thought it would be really interesting to develop a game with men, mechanics that involved watching other people and trying to find out, about the reasons behind their behavior wondering about their lives. Of course, the film Rear Window came to our minds really quickly, but we thought an interface like the main view of the movie had certain restraints regarding the number of people to spy on and the kind of stories we could tell. So, we kept looking for inspiration about the final approach of the car idea behind the game. We used Unity 3D as the main engine, and then an in-house, custom narrative design tool to create and implement the storylines, dialogues and so forth into Unity. We tracked progress and managed the production using Hamplan, a great tool made by some Spanish mates, that we definitely recommend to every video games producer, after watching movies like Rare Window and the life of others, and replaying games like the good old little computer people, looking for the right approach for our new game, we happened upon, and grew really terrified about, the existence of websites like www, Instagram, or these sites feature the video feeds from thousands of unprotected, surveillance cameras worldwide placed out in the open in highways on the streets and nature backgrounds, but also in malls, restaurants, libraries, bars, warehouses, and even private homes. Then, 
We decided to mix the two ideas. What about a game in which the avatar had access to dozens of live camera feeds, so that they can spy on people and try to guess about the lives of the watched people? We loved with the idea immediately. It allowed us to tell lots of stories featuring different genres and to experiment with complex, rich narrative and game mechanics in a very creative way. So we started working on the game as it is now in January 2016, hand in hand with our mid set Badland, and finished the game almost three years later. Published by ALAWA and Premium. After making Dead Synchronicity, in which we told a post-apocalyptic, dark, harsh story, we really felt like doing something different and facing a challenge in our next game. We wanted to try different genres and other emotional moves than the ones featured in our first game. Going far do not feed the monkeys gave us the chance to unleash our creativity in regards to storytelling. In the game, there are dramatic, comical, satirical, tragic, terror, sci-fi stories, and more. We used this diversity to awaken the players' interest and to engage them, since our goal was to surprise them throughout the game about what happens in the so-called cages, the hacked surveillance cameras. In that regard, we used two layers of adhesive to keep players glued. To the chair and play longer. Firstly, they wish to unveil the mystery of each story, which is the motivation for the people you are spying on. Okay, uh, monkeys, what do they want to achieve? What are their lives like? And secondly, their expectations about what they will find in the new cage they just bought. The balancing of the puzzles was indeed a very important element with. Had to man of T-H-R-U-G-H-O-U-T-D-E-V-A-L-O-P-M-E-N-T. In fact, in Do Not Feed the Monkeys, the narrative and the game mechanics are so intertwined that we had to rewrite several stories and their puzzles every time. There was a rather deep change or adjustment in the game mechanics. Anyway, we think that, all in all, the success or failure of a puzzle is not so dependent. On its difficulty, as it is on developers creating enough motivation so that players focus on solving it, spending as much time as is needed. Without that motivation, we think the puzzle, no matter how easy or difficult it might be, turns into a mere formality, some kind of nonsense. With that in mind, it's essential that the puzzles are integrated as much as possible. In the story that's being told, so that the puzzles meld with the plot, the world, and the characters in the game. This was our main guideline when designing the puzzles, so that if we got to create that integration, and of course, to match the game as a whole, then the puzzle would be part of the stories themselves and not some abstract hurdle. Our goal was that the empathy that players would feel towards the characters and their stories was what motivated players to solve the puzzles. Therefore, it would diminish the risk that they got frustrated, and the rewards once the puzzles were solved would be more pleasant and satisfactory. Deciding what to do with your time and your attention is a very important part of Do Not Feed the Monkeys. So. We wanted to mimic the sometimes unbearable information overloaded, multi-technology tasking situation that most everyone faces nowadays. You know, you try to be focused on the work, and then an email notification pops up, and it's almost impossible not to pay attention. Then, while you are starting to read the email, just in case it's important, a Telegram WhatsApp chat notification claims your attention. And then a Facebook sound or a Twitter, Instagram, whatever warning, and maybe the cell phone rings. All that, including the chance to procrastinate a little bit by accessing an online store, a digital newspaper, etc. All of that is definitely changing the way we perceive the world. 
around us and the way we interact with it. And we wanted players to think about it by creating such a scenario in the game. In fact, the game challenges players by offering all those tools, plus a big amount of cameras to watch, in which the unexpected can happen at any given time. In the early stages of development, we made some prototypes with a grade of 10x10 video feeds, such that were 100 cages running at the same time. It would have been too much, not only for players but for us. As developers, obviously we could not make such a huge game. Besides, in the game there's an extra distracting element, which is people, all of them quite distinctive and peculiar, knocking on the door. So, it's even up to the players to open the door, or not. The do not feed the monkeys thing came very early in the development.